All right, ladies and gentlemen, you're back. 22 hours later, as promised, we're here live, five by five, around the world, from Sochi, Russia, Kazan, Russia, the six counties of Northern Ireland, all the way down to New Zealand and Australia. Welcome, Megan. I want to welcome Bobby and Megan from Southeast Asia and all that they're doing down there to keep this show on the air, to keep the websites up. To all my Marine buddies in the Outback, uh, Australian Marines, that is, for those of you in the United States Marine Corps, uh, New Zealand Marines, uh, for those of you that are in Australia, and to my uh, fellow uh, Irish Marines, God bless you for what you're doing out there. And my Scottish Marines, we know you're there. And to all my Marine buddies that are retired, living outside the United States, seeking refuge because they're tired of the police state that America has become in, has become, welcome. This is your show. This, is, this show is dedicated to you and the finances that you have so you can protect those finances as you very well know, we're all looking for the best advice we possibly can. And the man that we've got on the show today, Bob Chapman, comes every Thursday, due diligently, and does it for free. The least you guys could do is send him emails and say kudos, thank you, and uh, ask him for some help. He doesn't charge you one dime. He will give you real truth and real places to go, things that he can't bring out over the radio, that he shouldn't bring out over the radio. I want to welcome a... a, a uh, a couple of Marines specifically that are listening to show to the show today for the first time uh, that are retired, uh, and uh, I want to welcome them to the show. I'm not going to get, as you all know, I don't give out names and addresses or states. I, I may give out a state or a country that these Marines uh, may be in, but I do not give their rank, nor do I give out uh, their uh, number of years of service. I don't want anybody to think that they can be tracked down because on my show, we talk about what? The truth. We bring you the truth. We bring you the best advice possible. And if there's anything ever disputed, anything at all that is put out on my news and views, my special report news and views, that is disputed, please let me know because you'll find out that if somebody hasn't already beat you to the punch and my apology is not sitting in your box, then I want to know about it because I'm the first one to say, hey, look, the uh, information I got was bogus. The, the man that gave it to me thought it was or believed it was real. He did his diligence, but he failed his due diligence to find in, to find more about it. With all of that said, I hope I can bring uh, Bob Chapman on. I've seen to have a few problems here with the, uh, with the screen. But, uh, Mr. Chapman, if you're there, speak up and welcome to the show, sir. I am here, and I am oh, speaking I am. up. Okay, well, I know that you probably will have a little echo there uh, because Larissa came out and said that she was getting a feedback kickback, and uh, it was she was had forgotten to put in a, a, a stabilizer, and uh, it will be there in just a minute if you'll just bear with us. I'm waiting for the stabilizer, and it has <laughs> arrived. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this uh, this is uh, what we try to do out here. This is old-fashioned radio, uh, and we do everything we can <laughs> to get the radio out there. Uh, let's see here. I've got it says I've got uh, already got a caller over here on one side, Mr. Chapman. Uh, you did a fantastic uh, newsletter yesterday, and I would really appreciate it if you would start off at the very top of your newsletter and let these people know what how your newsletter reads out there. Well, I can't do that because I don't have it in front of me. <laughs> oh, you can't. <laughs> My office is in another location, and uh, so I can't do that. And I write so much, I can't even remember what I write. <laughs> <laughs> well, well if I you have a copy some... there, and you want to read something or ask something, well, we can do that. Okay, we'll, we will do I'll have to bring it up. I've got a, an IM from a friend, and... Uh in Maine, and she's giving some information about something that I needed. Uh, I just got back. I only got back bef to the studio five minutes before showtime, so I'm, ru <laughs> I'm running way behind myself. Um, what, what are the effects, Mr. Chapman, of uh, what's going on in Iran and the, the fact that the kids over there that are, uh, which make up 30% of the population, uh, are, what, what, are, what impact are those children uh, age uh, 18 to 35 doing on the, the financial market around the world because they're getting the actual truth of this, uh, of this political turmoil in Iran? Well, first of all, it's very difficult to tell what the truth is. 
Um, historically, uh, what we have done uh, as a government has been to give out a lot of disinformation. And uh, we have, in the past, misled our citizens and the world as to what's going on. And if you notice, over the last uh, perhaps, uh, oh, probably about eight, uh, about 13 years, uh, what's been done has been uh, the, uh, the, the information that gets fed back into us very often is not true. And, you know, we had these revolutions in Eastern Europe. Uh, uh, these were not violent revolutions. Uh, they were set up by George Soros and others, uh, orange and purple and, and these different colored revolutions. And in Iran, they had a green revolution. And that's all been planned underground by the U.S. government. And the U.S. government and the Mossad in Israel have admitted that they've been infiltrating people into the country to disrupt things not only uh, physically uh, by taking out uh, Iranian border guards and stuff like that, but also in uh, planning disruptions like you're seeing. So we don't know whether the U.S. government's behind it or it's a natural phenomenon. But having listened to what our government has said, it's my suspicion that it's been planned by the U.S. government to disrupt the government of Iran and bring it down. And so that's my take on it. That makes a lot of sense. I, I, for some, I, I turned my mic off because I had somebody walk in. Uh, in your report yesterday, in your news and views, I mean, your uh, international forecaster, you made a comment, and the reason I wanted to, you to bring forth is, you, bring up, you brought up a comment in the second sentence. We are seeing the last vestiges of a rally, a rally similar to what was seen, well, I didn't see, but what we saw in 1931. The rally we expected up at 6,600 up to 8,500 will end soon. Now, Mr. Chapman, three years ago on this very show on another network when it was being beamed on another network, you made a comment very precisely that when the and the market was running right around 1300 if i remember correctly but you said at that time that the market would would go up of just a tad more and then it's going to start falling and it will it will bottom out or not bottom out but it'll reach a point of around 8500 to 9000 stay there for one or two or even three months and then it'll bottom go go down again and bottom out around 6,000, maybe 5,500, and then it will go back up somewhere between 7,000 and 8,500, and then it's going to take a nosedive that may take it all the way to 4,500. Here you are making this statement, three, and you said this, you said this in, 19, in 2006, and you said it would happen in 2009 at the earliest, 2010. It's happening right now. And I want to point this out to the listeners out there that I have the radio show in which, which that was brought up. And I want to salute you, Mr. Chapman, for saying that at that well, time. Well, thank you. That, um, that, that Dow figure at the time was 13,500, and it, it went to 14,100 in 68. And we recommended uh, for those who were in the market, although we didn't, uh, recommend being in the market at that time with the exception of gold and silver shares. We recommended everybody get out of everything else. And, of course, it went to 8,500 to 9,000. It stopped there. It didn't get to 6,000. And we did change our estimate to 6,600 uh, after that, about a year and a half later. And it hit exactly on 6,600. In fact, the qualifier on that was if it breaks the old low that was made in 2001 of 7286, it'll go to 6600, and then it will rally to uh, 78 to 8500. Well, it's today it was 8555, but it's been high as 8800, and the rally I think is ending. 
and I think it will go back down and test 6,600. And over the next year or so, I believe that it will go down into the 5,000 to 6,500 area. But I think uh, ultimately uh, somewhere between uh, 20, uh, um, 38 and 4,500 is doable if we are lucky. Uh, 